What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing my review of the ROG Ally after owning this thing for two weeks. So let's get into it. Alright, so I own the ROG Ally for two weeks now. I did pick this up on Best Buy on launch day and I was kind of surprised. This thing was in stock. I was expecting this thing to have like zero stock, but I mean, I'm wrong, I guess, but I don't know. I was just expecting this thing to be out of stock. I did, I guess I technically did pre-order this thing. I pre-ordered it the night before this thing launched just to make sure that I will, you know, be able to have a unit. And then I went into Best Buy and I just picked it up. I seen a few people who were in front of me who were also picking up this ally. So that was, you know, pretty cool to see. And um, yeah, so here's the ally. Now, on top of that, I did pick up some accessories. I did got... Damn, I did pick up the official case. I didn't buy the official case on launch day. I bought it, you know, maybe like a week after because I realized like I have no way carrying this thing around. I had no case, nothing. So I'm going to show you guys the case real quick. And I also did pick up the official charger for the Ally. Not the charger that comes in a box, but the charger that you can buy on Best Buy. I think it's like 60 something dollars. It's a 65 watt charger and it's made by ASUS. So I'm going to show you guys that as well. So let's get into it. All right, so here's the official ROG case. This case did cost about 60 bucks at Best Buy. I know that sounds like a lot of money for a case, but at the time, hell, even like two weeks later, I couldn't really find a case that I would buy. I did find one particular case on Amazon that I was gonna buy. It was also 40 bucks, but then I noticed the price actually increased and I wasn't able to get this case until like July. I was like, nah, I'm not waiting that long. So I'm just getting this case. It is 40 bucks, but I want a case now versus later. And the ones on Amazon, they were around the same price and they were gonna take a while to ship. So, and I wasn't waiting that long. So I ordered this from Best Buy. It only took like two days to get here. So here's the case. It's not, it's okay. I mean, 40 bucks, I'm not complaining. Now, there are indents right here for the analog sticks. I'm not sure. If my camera is going to be able to pick that up, but there are indents for the analog sticks. So you also do get like a little flap. Not sure what you're going to put in here, but you can probably put like a SD card slot in here or something, but we will see. Anyway, let's see how this thing fits in here. So you put it in this way and then you just close it. Hold on. So yeah, you close it, you zip it up, and then it says, what does it say? I don't even know what this said. What is this first? I don't know, it's like kind of cut out Republic of Gamers or something. Yeah, it just repeats that over and over. And yeah, this is the official case by Asus. And let's move on to the official charger by Asus. All right, so right here we have the 65 watt charger from Asus. Now this thing does cost somewhere like 60 or 70, something like $60 or something. Now with this dock, you do get HDMI 2.0. You also get a USB 2.0. I don't know why I said it like that. And you also get a USB-C that connects directly to the Ally. This dock is able to run the, o the Asus Ally at 30 watts when it's charging. So basically it's running turbo mode 30 watts. This dock is able to hand that, handle that. Even when this dock is like connected to a monitor or a TV, it's still able to put out 65 watts, I mean, 30 watt turbo mode. Also, I do have a, so this is the dock I use in combination with this. I plug a, the USB-A cable into this and it's still able to run at 30 watt turbo mode with this, you know, giant dock connected with a bunch of accessories plugged in. This thing is still able to give the ROG Ally 30 watts of turbo mode, which is pretty nice. Speaking of that, the cable that comes with that dock is braided. It's a pretty long USB-C cable. I think it's like, what, six feet long or something like that. It's a pretty long USB-C cable. But yeah, I gotta say, this is a pretty nice, you know, dock. You can also use this for other devices like your MacBook, your iPad, laptop, whatever. 
so you know it's not you know limited to anything but yeah this is a pretty nice dog i do highly recommend you pick this up if you want to plug in you know something like this because this is able to this and this work together pretty good i just like how this can still run my ally at 30 watt turbo mode with this giant dock plugged in now this dock i did not buy this for the rog i actually bought this for my macbook a couple of uh months ago and i gotta say this dock works pretty well as you can see i have the xbox wireless adapter hooked up i have my mouse hooked up and i also have my keyboard hooked up and this thing has plenty of ports you have two usb-c headphone jack sd card readers the power button for this dock if the camera actually focuses which it probably won't but anyway onto the back you have the ethernet cable usb 2.0 hdmi um this is able to put out 4k at i think 60 hertz or 120 something like that it's able to output that but if you have a 1440p monitor you're also able to put out you know high refresh rate i'm just not sure what's it's limited to you'd also do have two display ports back here this camera is really pissing me off that it's not focusing there we go you also have you know you plug this into your computer and then you plug this in for power now with this pacific dock what you actually do is you plug in a usb c cable into the host so you plug it into this one and then you plug in the other end to the usb a cable and it works perfectly fine but anyway let's move on to the things that i like about the rlg ally oh before we move on to that i almost forgot to talk about how hot this thing gets this thing gets pretty toasty if you're wondering why i know that is because I, I was just wondering like does this thing get like you know really hot and this thing does get pretty toasty when you have like a monitor plugged in and then you have like something like this plugged in like this thing gets pretty toasty now i'm going to show you guys what i mean by you plug you know your usb a side of the cable into this thing if you happen to do pick up this dock i will drop a link in the description this dock was kind of expensive i think it was like 90 bucks or something but it was pretty worth it but anyway so you plug you know this side into this side and then you basically just plug this into the host now when it's plugged into the host it can actually still grab power from this or if you really want to you can plug in another usb-c cable and plug that usb-c cable into the wall so it can grab power from an external source but if you want to go this route just plug it into the host and it'll just grab its power from this dock but anyway let's actually move on to the likes i have with the rlg ally all right getting to like number one with the rlg ally is that i like how this thing has a fingerprint scanner that is pretty cool so we're about to find out if it works it should cache my finger when i turn this thing on and let's see if this works and it does not unfortunately it cannot be recognized i get that a lot but when it works it works great so here is the home screen of the rog ally i did change the wallpaper so this is definitely not the stock wallpaper but anyway as you can see we are on the home screen i have my games right here you probably can barely see that but i do like how this thing has a fingerprint scooter <laughs> a fingerprint sc scanner jesus but yeah i do like how this thing has a fingerprint scanner that is pretty nice um since i do use this as a desktop on when i ha do have it docked i guess that thing does kind of come in clutch because i probably do have some information here i, I you know don't want to like i'm not hiding anything but like still it's like you know having a passcode on your phone you just don't want no one to like have access to it but i do treat this like a laptop or a desktop as you can say so it is nice that that fingerprint scanner is there but anyway let's move on to the next thing that i like about this thing all right, so let's start with the screen. This is a 1080p, 120 words, 120 words screen. I don't know why I stuttered that so much. And it's a pretty nice screen. Now, the content may look a little like on the red side is to use because I have a blue light filter on. It is, you know, nighttime, so I like to have a blue light filter on. But I gotta say, this is a nice screen. It runs at 120 hertz and it's 1080p. Uh, for some games, I do run at 720p, but on a screen size like this, I can't even like, I can kind of tell it's 720p versus 
1080p but i mean it's not i mean it's not oled though i mean unfortunately i wish it was oled but it's still a nice screen but anyway let's move on to another thing i like about this thing all right so the next thing i like about this thing has to be the speakers i feel like these speakers sound better than some get laptops out there but let me guys give you a little test sample of how these speakers sound now look i do have the volume set to 40 percent and i'm just gonna let you guys hear how this thing sounds now keep in mind i am running fallout 3 and if you know anything about fallout 3 if you run this game over like 60 frames for some reason this game just kind of the timing of this game kind of just goes crazy but anyway i'm just gonna give you guys a little test sample of these speakers real quick So after that gameplay, I'm probably gonna get demonetized, but this channel is not even monetized anyway, so I, I really don't care. But yeah, that is a little test sample of these speakers, so let's move on. All right, since we're talking about sound, how this, how loud does this thing get? So right now I'm playing Ghost Recon Wildlands. This is the only somewhat demanding game I have access to right now. I do have games like Cyberpunk, but I don't have it installed on here right now. But anyway. We're gonna see how loud this thing gets. So right now we are at 19 watts and I have this thing running at performance mode. And let's see how loud this thing gets. Right now we're just in the open area. We are getting about um, 50 frames right now, at least in this spot. Um, let's see if we can finally come. I don't know why, but it looks kind of rough right now, but I probably have to play around with the settings a little bit. We're consistently getting into 40 frames. Now this is running 1080p medium settings and i gotta say this is this is playable i mean at least this game <laughs> can run at a higher frame rate on like my ps5 eyes up we got hostiles in the area i hate how like older games are just locked to 30 frames on ps5 but i mean that's how they were made so this is basically a console i mean this is basically like a pc in your hands I'm trying to get some action see how bad the frame rate is but yeah you can barely hear this thing. I'm going to be quiet. Like them up. And I'm actually going to turn the speakers down so you guys can, like, you know, kind of hear the fans. You can barely hear them, though. So I'm going to be quiet and let y'all listen. All right. And then we, if we turn the speakers up. And am I getting shot? No, I'm shooting. You can't really hear the speakers, man. So let's kick this thing into server mode. Right now we are running at 35 watts and I can, can't really hear the speakers. Oh, and the temp is 73, 74 degrees Celsius. I gotta say, this thing runs pretty quiet. You don't really hear the fans. If you're playing with headphones, you're definitely not gonna hear these. If you're playing with the onboard speakers, you might hear them in like a quiet scene, but like, you can always just, you know, turn the speakers up, but you can't really hear the fans. I'm just going to leave it on mute so you guys can actually hear the fans. But yeah, you can't really hit our fans, so we're going to move on to the next thing. Alright, the next thing I like about this thing is Armory Crate. Now, say what you want about Armory Crate, but I kind of like Armory Crate. It's, you know, a pretty light software. Let's go to Task Manager and just see how much resources this thing takes. So we're in Task Manager, and as you can see, Armory Crate doesn't really take up that much resources. It's not even using that much RAM. Hold on, let's see if we can, like, 
somehow put this in split view. You know what, never mind. But, you know, this is pretty light. It doesn't really take up that many resources, according to Task Manager. Now, what also with Armory Crate, you can, like, make configurations for, you know, individual games. So, like, for an example, why is it jump? Oh, my God. I think because Steam is running, it's probably why it's jumping around. So, let me shut down Steam real quick. Sorry, guys. My This camera keeps switching. Like, you might notice how the camera keeps randomly zooming in zooming out is because my iphone is switching between the, the different cameras it keeps going into ultra wide than like the normal camera it just keeps going out yeah it just did it again it keeps doing it automatically so i'm gonna you know not get the device too close but anyway in armory crate you can like create what the hell it's still doing it forget it all right so in let me just restart it real quick I was just giving this app praise. And now it wants to treat me like this. Okay, there we go. That was normal, normally. Normally. So anyway, in Armory Create, you can create like presets for individual games. But the presets I have for all the games are basically the same. So for an example, in Ghost Recon, you can create like, you know, macros. So for an example, if I hold like this back button right here, or, you know what I mean, like these programmable buttons i don't know why i can't get my words right today programmable buttons back here i hold like i hold this one so i hold this and then i push this analog stick down and as you can see it will force quit a game or basically all tab for all four it will basically do that i do have this program for every game just in case i happen to get stuck in a game so for example in left 4 dead 2 you know same thing it will force quit a game if i hold down one of these programmable buttons in the back. Now, speaking of that, game profiles, uh, you, you can also configure each game if you want your games to run at turbo mode or performance mode. Now, operating mode AC basically means what it will operate if it's plugged in, and operating mode DC basically means what it will run at if it's on battery. So yeah, for all my games, I have them run at turbo mode on power and then battery mode, performance mode, battery and then for like other apps like for an example if i'm like as you can see like right now this is running at silent mode i only use silent mode on basically desktop and apps that don't require power at all like for an example steam steam will always run on silent mode no matter if i'm plugged in or on battery if there's a game running in the background it will just go back to silent mode and then one night you know actively in that game it will go back to performance and turbo mode depending on if i'm on battery or plugged in so yeah you can program those buttons to do anything that you wanted to do i'm gonna show you guys that real quick you can just go in configuration and then think oh yeah so for this button if i'm on what is this gamepad mode if i just click this button this one specifically it will open the xbox app Let's see if it works and i probably disabled xbox by accident but yeah it's supposed to open but it's not open enough probably because i you know disabled it by accident but yeah i do like armory crate and uh let's move on all right and the last thing or the last like i want to talk about this thing is the performance you know this thing is like it's not even that big i mean it's probably smaller than the steam deck i'm not sure i do not have a steam deck so i can't even compare it to that i also don't have a nintendo switch so i can't compare that to this but like this is a nice handheld console if you just want to play your pc games on the go or hell some of your xbox games on the go you can do that that's the main reason why i picked this up um since xbox doesn't really have like a handheld console i see this as a more of a handheld console than you know anything like i mostly play xbox game pass games i don't really have a big steam library but if i was to buy more steam games then this will definitely pay for itself so right now we are running left for dead 2 this is one of my favorite games and as you can see it automatically booted into performance mode because i have that you know that profile set up so i don't have to do anything also in auto mode so it will swap back and forth between desktop and gamepad mode but since i have a custom profile for left 4 dead when i open this it will just basically switch to its gamepad mode and as you can see it is running 1080p 
what's the frame rate we're getting give it a second to show it. we're getting like 90 100 frames so we're basically maxing out the resolution the, res the frame rate right now Um, what is the settings are at? Let's see. Oh, I did not mean to click that. And I think it just froze. Um, yeah, I think I did not mean to do that. Go back to full screen mode. So these are the settings that this thing is running at. I'm just, you know, surprised with the performance of this thing. It runs all the games that I need. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna like, this is not like a high-end PC with like 40, 90 capabilities, but I mean, it's a $700 handheld console, so you get what you pay for. But yeah. performance mode so we're not even on turbo mode i didn't even bring another gun i just you know walked out here just to get shot basically you know i should do a playthrough how far can i get with a pistol <laughs> not very far it sounds like my right trigger is making some weird noises but i'm not even gonna bother to exchange it i don't want to get a worse unit i might get a unit that has like one fan not working that's one thing about asus their quality control you can get like a messed up device and i just got hit by a hunter where are they at while i died are you serious i should shoot i should just shoot my teammates <laughs> you know let's just let's just jump over bridge and this but yeah that's left for dead for you it's on performance mode and this thing is you can barely hear these fans. But anyway, let's move on to the dislikes or let's just say issues I have with the RMG Ally. Alright, so let's get into the RMG Ally. The dislikes. So, dislike number one I have with this thing is sometimes the fingerprint scanner just does not recognize just does not recognize your finger on the first try. Let's see if it recognizes me. Nope, your device could not recognize you. You know, how, hold on. So that is pretty annoying. Sometimes you just have to keep on trying and see if it works. And I say seven out of 10 times it works. It's just pretty annoying that this fingerprint scanner just does not work all the time. And another issue I have with this fingerprint scanner is when you try to add a finger. Why are I throw these damn menus? So when you try to add a new finger, you're gonna click add a finger. It's a whole process to get this work. Uh, I'm not even gonna bother, but when you try to add new fingers to this thing, sometimes it's saying that it cannot even recognize, but yeah. Anyway, we're gonna move on to, okay, I like, we're actually gonna try to add a new finger. So I'll just watch what happens when you just try to add a finger. So we're gonna use my index finger and Look, you get this so many times when you're doing this. Hold on, it's probably not gonna focus. Let me back up. Your device is having trouble recognizing you. Make sure your sensor is clean. Yeah, I get this a lot. It's so annoying. You can clean it. This message always comes up, man. Or it comes up a lot. This is why I don't, I only have one finger registered to this thing because I do not feel like adding more. Look, you're, oh look. But you usually get the uh your finger cannot be recognized it's so annoying actually it's actually working up oh, there we go make sure your sensor is clean yeah 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 but you get this message so many times it just makes it not want to do this but yeah that's just the issue i have with the fingerprint scanner all right so let's move on all right so the next thing i I should say it's more of an issue and not a dislike is, you know, Asus quality control. Like I bought so many of their G14 laptops and they all have issues. Now this thing does have 
maybe just a few small issues. Actually, probably just like two small issues. So for one, back leg bleed is kind of, it's actually, I mean, their back leg bleed is way better than what their laptops be looking like. Back leg bleed is okay. It's not, I think my iPad mini is a little bit worse. And look, here you go with this fingerprint scanner. Your finger could not be recognized. Actually, you know what? I use this finger. This finger is not even, um, <laughs> this finger's not even on there, so... Okay, but if I use my actual finger that's registered, does it work? Okay, there we go. Sometimes it doesn't work, and sometimes it does. But yeah, I gotta say their quality control now for my Pacific unit. I just noticed this issue while making this video, and that is my trigger makes some kind of noise. So if we just do this, you hear that? It's like a squeaker noise. Now I'm not going to go and return this because I'm afraid I'm going to get an even worse unit. I mean, that's why I'm just going to deal with that squeaking noise. I don't want to, you know, risk exchanging this thing and I get like a unit that has like a broken fan or a blown out speaker. I mean, like their quality control is usually not that great. They let so many devices slip like that. It's pretty annoying. So I hope Asus steps up their quality control issues, man. Like... The amount of Asus laptops that I bought and took back just because of their quality control is just, it's a lot, man. I bought so many Asus G14s and they all had like one major issue. One, one of the laptops I bought had like a fan that was like making like a pretty loud noise. All right, so I just got this G14 and it's making some weird type of noise. I don't know what that sound is, but I'm about to take this back. Their quality control is not that great. I hope they can improve on it, but at least with this unit, it's the trigger making some squeaking noises a little bit, but it's not that big of an issue, but I'll probably just deal with it. I'm not going to risk exchanging this, and then I get a even worse unit, then I'll be pretty pissed about that. But anyway, now battery life on this thing is... Honestly, I haven't really tested the battery like that. I mean, max, I probably get like shit probably like an hour but i mostly use this thing plugged in but tomorrow i'm going to do in a little test i'm going to see like how long does this thing like last like you know outside where like there's no outlets nowhere to plug this thing in i'm just going to do a little test to see how this you know this runs i may make an update video on this thing but we'll we will see but now we're going to move on to the desktop experience of the rg ally so what i mean by that is how well can you use the RG Ally as a, you know, desktop? So let's get into that. All right, so we are back on using the Ally and I have the Ally hooked up to my 27 inch 1440p monitor. This monitor is capable of running 165 Hertz, but for some reason, hold on, this monitor is locked to 60 Hertz. See, look, no option to run this higher. This thing can run at 165 hertz, but for some reason, I cannot get it to run higher than 60 hertz. Might have to do something with that dock, but I am not too sure. I will figure this out later, but for some reason, it's just locked at 60 hertz. And if I press the command button, I mean, well, the... the Ally is running at 120 hertz, but my actual monitor is running at 60 hertz. But it is what it is. But but yeah, this is the desktop experience. So right here, I just have a YouTube plan, and then I just have Steam Big Picture mode on. Can the RG Ally handle a YouTube video and a game? I mean, let's just find out. We're just gonna open up Left 4 Dead 2. It's the quickest game that actually opens on here. And look, we're already in the game in the game no launcher nothing we're just right into it just go to single player hold on we gotta move this mouse out the way dagger can't go down there we go dead island mm, dead center not dead island so yeah we got left for dead 2 running and we also have the ally running i am gonna bring up the real time monitor feed so you guys can see what it's doing so yeah, here it is. It's 
currently running at 16, 15 watts. Should be running at 30, let me see. So yeah, we're getting pretty high frame rate. And like I said, or I didn't say it, but like I showed you guys earlier, this game is running at high settings. It is still running at 1080p. I haven't adjusted it yet, but it is what it is. And we still have the YouTube playing in the background, no problems. So yeah, I'm gonna open it up command center real quick. And as you can see, we still have the 30 watt turbo mode with this dock hooked up to this power brick basically. I do have my monitor hooked up to this dock as well. And yeah, we're getting 30 watt turbo mode out of this thing. I don't really get out of that. I gotta say, it runs pretty good. And yep, we just have the ally just now. This is how I usually play. I usually depending on what I'm playing, I have a YouTube video playing in the background. Then I have my actual game right here. And I gotta say, this works pretty well. Um, let's see if I can play with one hand. I'm, I'm just gonna get myself killed because I ain't really trying to play this right now. If you ever play Left 4 Dead 2, this is like a really good game. I said I was gonna get myself killed, and here I am killing zombies. Well, let's just see how long it takes. I, yep, that just that just happened. We gotta walk in here, right? Anyway, oh no, there's an invisible wall. What the hell? Okay. I need to go out the window. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I'm not even gonna continue. It's hard to play this with one hand, but yeah. That is, um, that's Left 4 Dead 2 on the Ally with the YouTube video playing in the background. I really do like this setup, man. I really do. Oh, and then right here we have my headset connected. This is the dock for the headset, and it's also plugged into that. And I gotta say, this works pretty well. Now, I did try to plug in the monitor directly to the dock, but I wasn't getting any HDMI signal. So maybe there's just not enough power to power all the all the ports for this thing. Because I wasn't getting an HDMI signal when I plug in the monitor directly into that. Maybe there wasn't enough power for that. But anyway, I got to say this docks works pretty well. And this ally just, just keeps on impressing me, man. Like, I'm just so surprised what this thing can do. I wonder how this thing will be in like the next couple of years or... The ally too. I wonder how like how much better. What the hell? A smoker just dragged me. But yeah, I just wonder how much better the ally would be the next generation. I just hope they add an OLED screen. And I think that the ally would be honestly probably the only PC that I will need. But yeah, this is the desktop experience. is running Windows, so it basically does computer things. You can probably edit videos on this thing too, but. But yeah, I think we're going to wrap up this video here. Um, hopefully this review was enough for you guys to, you know, understand what you're getting yourself into with this thing. Like I said, this is a handheld PC, basically, that runs Windows 11. You do got things like the Steam Deck, but the Steam Deck does run Steam OS. So I'm not sure how the Steam Deck really works. I don't own one, but yeah, that's about the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and... Depending on how this video does, I might make a part two to this. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and hopefully I get back to you. But yeah, that's about it. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.